the first form of money is the one created by government. In practice, it's outsourced to the central bank Royal Mint, but controlled by the government. Physical money comes in two forms, either paper money or coins. This physical money is a tiny fraction of the economy, and in many economies, this kind of money only makes up about 3 to 8%. This physical money is created in order to meet the obligations of private banks. When you go to an ATM and try to withdraw cash, banks need to make sure that they have enough cash in order to meet those obligations. So let's take a $10 note for example. It costs approximately 3 cents in order to print this note. This means that there's approximately $9.97 of profit for creating a $10 note. This $9.97 can now be added to tax revenue of the government. This revenue is called seniorage. So since the government makes profit from printing and minting coins and can reduce the amount of taxation on the public, you might be thinking, why don't governments just always print physical money? The main reason that governments don't create the majority of money is because of politicians. If the politician running the office could create money at will, there would be a massive conflict of interest. There would be an urge to keep printing to fulfill campaign promises or fund wars. This would, in theory, destroy the currency by excessive printing, causing massive devaluation. The more money you have in circulation, the less it's worth. And that's a key point. For example, if massive inflation takes place and the average Joe has a million dollars, but that million dollars only buys an apple, how much is a million dollars actually worth? The loss in purchasing power of money over time is called inflation, and when inflation gets out of hand, money becomes worthless. Some recent examples of runaway inflation include Argentina, Zimbabwe, and Venezuela. In this animation, you can graphically see just how fast inflation can run away. You don't see it coming, and as the inflation rate goes up, people quickly lose faith in the currency. For example, here we can see some people in Venezuela using money to make handbags and to draw pictures on because it simply isn't worth anything anymore. You can think of money as a measuring stick of value, a measuring stick that is highly elastic and can change depending on how much of it there is. For thousands of years, gold was the measuring stick of value. Gold was kind of like a physical anchor, keeping the money supply in check and governments responsible. In 1971, President Richard Nixon announced that the United States would no longer convert dollars to gold at a fixed value. Since that point, money, the measuring stick of value, has become elastic. Since the US dollar backs all other currencies as a reserve currency, Nixon's decision changed the world. In all of this, you might still notice that despite politicians supposedly not being able to influence money creation, it's happening anyway. This may cause problems as we'll see later in the episode. So to recap, the government creates physical forms of money, like notes and coins. Only about 3-8% to of money is made this way. Signerage is the income from that physical money. This income is both a benefit to the government and the taxpayer. It reduces debt for the government and reduces the burden on the individual taxpayer. The reason governments don't create more of this money is because of the inflation risk from politicians' decisions. 